Joining me now is Oren Siegel, Vice President of the Anti-Defamation League Center on Extremism. Oren, thanks for joining me tonight. Thanks. So how do we make sense of this? this just, let's just start first with what happened and what's happening in Colorado Springs, hate crimes. I mean, talk to me about how you define a hate crime. It, it seems confusing to people, at least in the Tucker Carlson orbit, that someone who is part of a community can also be guilty of a hate crime against that community. Right, so it's not clear to me what community he was part of other than what it appears to be an extremist community. Yeah. So somebody who's targeting somebody because of who they love, their religion, what they look like. Um, you know, these are characteristics that they can't change. When somebody's targeted because of that, that is often a hate crime. And so what we saw in Colorado Springs was just the latest in a series of mass violent attacks by those who oppose their perceived enemies for reasons that a lot of people will never understand, mm -hmm. but that we see the deadly consequences of. Yeah, and you guys have a new report out on murder and extremism in the U.S., and the results are terrifying in a word, right? The, if you look at the chart, I think we can bring it up, and you're tracking um, domestic extremist mass killings in the U.S. by decade, and there's, oh, there's 2011 to 2020, and it skyrockets. We are, of course, not done with this decade, but we're already on track with five, and it is the month of... I have to think about it for a second, February yes, yes. of 2023, far from the end of the decade. How are you processing that? I mean, what, what do you glean from this chart other than we're, we're getting worse as a society, quite obviously? In society, not only we have a gun violence problem, we have a mass killing problem, but we very specifically have an extremist mass killing problem. When you look at the last 12 years, there have been 20, 26 mass killings like Buffalo, El Paso, Pittsburgh, and so on. That is more than what we saw in the previous 40 years. Wow. So A, extremism is being normalized. The narratives that animate it are in the public, they're on social media. The access to weapons by extremists is as easy as it's ever been. And frankly, I think there's a lack of accountability, both from social media companies, from our public discussion, that says this type of hate that animates violence is okay in some way. Why do you think, I mean, how and why has it gotten normalized? And what can be done about that? Because we can't, we can't live like this, right? Something has to be done to tear out extremism, root and branch. And yet it feels like we're getting farther from that as opposed to closer. You know, I mean, there are so many issues, I think, in our country about exposure to hate without friction. Right. The lack of accountability when somebody engages in an insurrection or a hate crime or a violent mass killing, there's somehow a debate about that after it happens. There's no immediate reckoning or understanding of what's happening in the community. It immediately gets politicized. That does not help us in the fight against this type of hatred. I also feel like we have there's like a pornographic, almost pornographic lust for rage. And this idea that the flyers that we were talking about, the idea that younger people, I don't actually know, that, that groups of people are going around and throwing anti-Semitic flyers into people's front yards and, uh, you know, at them in cities across this country and then trying to grow their online followers. That's right. Through the imagery of this, the, this anti-Semitic, these anti-Semitic acts of, of, of terror, really. What, I mean, like, what does that tell you about society and the way in which there seems to be some sick enjoyment in terms of terrorizing people? You know, we're in a selfie culture. And frankly, that culture also uh, impacts and animates the way extremists operate. So when you talk about flyers being put on uh, lawns of people's homes or banners being dropped off of freeways yes. um, or harassment of people in the street, like we saw just a couple of days ago, not too far from the studios here at a theater uh, showing a, 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 um, a play about anti-Semitism, what they're doing is not just targeting a community, they're filming it. Yeah. They're making sure that there's propaganda value so then they when they signal back to their communities online in order to keep people engaged. And by the way, they're also getting cryptocurrency and other money in order to continue to do this type of harassment. Extremism, anti-Semitism and bigotry today is frankly a form of entertainment. Wow. And they have ways to make sure that people are constantly engaged. And that's why. This is such a serious threat. That's why not only the Jewish community, the LGBTQ community and others feel vulnerable yeah. because accountability is far behind our ability to communicate. And there is not a far leap from throwing anti-Semitic flyers to actually engaging in physical violence. What is the day of hate that Chicago police are warning about? 
So a couple of weeks ago at ADL, we identified some extremists talking about wanting to, you know, choose this date tomorrow to, you know, do their flyering, their bannering, their protests, and to target the Jewish community in particular. I will just say this concept of a day of hate, when you look at the recent past, Every day has been a day of hate. This has been a past couple years of massive amounts of high levels of anti-Semitic incidents and other forms of hate. So this is in some ways not unique, but when you are following up two Jews being shot in Los Angeles, when there are these other incidents that are occurring, we don't have a luxury to just sort of downplay this as another day. We have to make sure that communities are taking every steps that they can to make sure that they're protecting themselves and law enforcement is sending people to make sure that those communities feel safe. May better days be ahead. Oren Siegel, thanks as always for your time tonight and the valuable work you're doing with the ADL. Thank you.